knows too much. After barmaid Hattie Carroll was struck on the shoulder by a cane wielded by abusive and drunken William Zend Sinker, she soon collapsed and died. It was only three or four sentences in the papers at the time, but young Bob Dylan seized on that story to write one of his most political songs, The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. But where were the songwriters 40 years later when Margie Schellinger was murdered? Margie was a successful black woman who ran her own company and was working on a Ph.D. She lived in a suburb of Houston and was happily married. One day in 2002, she and her husband were visited by three men who claimed to be FBI agents. What happened next is a bit confusing since both she and her husband were drugged and apparently sexually assaulted by different people at different times, although details remain sketchy due to the drugs involved. However, Margie says she wasn't drugged until coming face to face with George W. Bush, who raped her and said he would have her killed if she told anyone. Well, Margie didn't listen to that advice and immediately filed charges with the Sugarland County Police and naturally instantly became the subject of around the clock surveillance and harassment. Margie never went to the press and spoke to no one about this case outside her own family, but by filing charges, she had created a matter of public record, one that was universally ignored by the entire North American media at the time. What the police failed to tell anyone, however, was that they had investigated her past and discovered that she had, in fact, known George Bush when they were both teens, which made the case particularly sticky and potentially explosive. Very soon, however, Margie was dead of a gunshot to the head and death ruled a suicide. Meanwhile, her relatives seemed to have disappeared perhaps in terror, and virtually nothing on this story can be found online anywhere except for what little tidbits appeared in the European press. There are no pictures of Margie to be found anywhere. It sort of harkens back to MK Ultra and the concept of a privileged deviant elite that believes they have a completely different set of rules and morality or lack thereof. Why was it Monica Lewinsky was splattered all over the tabloids, but Margie disappeared like a snow devil in a winter fog? The entire Bush family has a dark history with many mysteries. Someday there will be a godfather-like saga written about them, but that likely won't come for decades to protect the guilty, no doubt. For example, why did W save the life of admitted serial killer Henry Lee Lucas, who'd received a death sentence until... Bush commuted that to life in prison. He was governor of Texas and had a reputation for killing more prisoners than anyone else at the time. Texas executed 152 during his tenure, apparently more than any other governor of any state in modern history, and during a time when crime rates were falling everywhere. So what is it that made Henry Lee Lucas so special? Which brings me to Jeff Gannon who was issued a White House press pass and gained a reputation for asking fawning powder puff questions, the sort Bush would have wanted to get asked. But an enterprising White House reporter started digging around on the internet and found sexy pictures of Gannon on militarystuds.com, where his sexual services were advertised for $200 an hour. After this disgrace, Gannon dropped out of sight for a while, but tried to continue as a renegade journalist with explosive insider information. And during the 2004 election, he claimed John Kerry was gay and would be the first openly gay president if elected, a story that seemed to serve the interest of his good friend George Bush. You ask how I know they're friends? Well, here's a moment Bush and Gannon had after one of those press conferences. 